today let's do a, a goblet and uh, we'll start off with a top and we'll break this video into all oh, three sections or so uh, for the top, the bottom, and the center. Uh, that's a 38 mil heavy wall tube and I just want to grab a little 4 mil punty there and tapped off a little bit of remnant uh, using the cold water and the thermal shock to tap that off and get a clean end on it. Uh, you want to be able to rely on uh, what you're using there. So, uh, oh, I've done this, sorry, this isn't a punty. I'm just cleaning that up and I'm going to heat up that tip and draw the material out until there's not enough material to maintain the surface and then we'll have a hole there. And then I'm going to weld up another 9.5 handle to the other side uh, so that uh, I can cut this tube in half and have a handle on each end. Because there's more than enough material there to make a goblet top. There's enough there for two. Uh, so by dividing it in half I'll have just about the right amount for making each uh, one of my goblet tops. So I'm just going to round that out a little bit, take it up to just about where I'll be able to weld up my 9.5 tube to it. And I'm going to plug that in because I want to be able to blow on the new handle and pressurize and put a little bit of uh, uh, pressure behind the, the tube on the inside when I blow it out. So I need to flare the 9.5 out just a little bit. So I'll use the, the corner of the little marvering pad down there to do that. right there on the corner. Perfect size, okay. So we'll throw it back together in the flame there, get them both really really hot, put them together and then rotate them a little bit as they condense and smooth out. Then I'll drop it down into the uh, corner of the marvering pad and let that take the weight, rotate it a little bit, and then at the proper time give it a little puff of air to uh, blow it out and make it smooth and a little bit more rounded. So I'm moving my head way down there to blow on it without lifting it up. That, that helps keep it true. There we go. So I want to switch over to the other pad. I like to use uh, that marvering, uh, the arrowhead marver for separating uh, larger pieces like this. So remove that plug. You don't want to cut this in half and then have that right hand portion be sealed up or the hot molten glass as it cools will suck in and uh, <laughs> it'll deform the shape that you were going for. So nice even spin in the flame. Slowly build your flame up and uh, cut that thing in two. I'm going to adjust my handle a little bit. I saw that that left side had just a little bit of offset. And so I heated it up just enough for it to move, put it back on the paddle, rotated it while gently pulling, and, and now it's very satisfactory. So back to heating up that center to cut this thing in half. Oh, blew my flame out there for a second. That happens sometimes when I get really up at the edge of what that little torch will do. But I still enjoy it. I, I, I prefer that over running quicker with the large top torch uh, because it would just heat up too much area sideways. I want to keep a thinner ring of heat here. So we'll just be patient with it as we rotate that around and apply all that heat. It will condense down until it closes up and we divide it into two. Try and do this as evenly as possible because any mistake or any asymmetry at this point will really affect what happens later. So if you haven't got it straight, don't continue. Get it straight. There we go. Just about through it. And remember, that's a pretty good sized tube for most people to be working with. 38 millimeter heavy wall is, is not small. Maybe for the guys who work on lathes and do really large stuff, but for most lamp workers, 38's kind of getting up there. So 
So I'm just pulling those apart. That gives it a more rounded end. Before they had kind of pulled in a little bit and it is stronger when you pull them or blow them out a little bit after they've condensed down. So then I'm going to go up to a large torch, put some, some generous heat to it to get it warm. We're going to do a um, kind of a branch and leaf pattern on this just to decorate this upper portion and not just be clear glass. It's a little fancier. You don't have to do it, but it has a nice effect. So this is, um, let's see, what is that? That's amber tubing over Chinese white. Uh, pulled out to make a thin rod that's kind of got two tones because it's got the white core and the amber around it. So on the edges you see amber and in the center you see mostly white. And that, that helps this stuff to look a little bit organic. A lot of times when I do greens I'll do uh, transparent green over white and pull it out into a thin stringer. Uh, cobalt over white's a real nice one. So I'm doing basically three branches sticking up out of the ground going around. They're going to get leaves on them. Uh, and then between each of the three, I'm putting a, um, oh gee, I suppose it's kind of a palm frond looking thing. It just curls around and then it curls around the other way. Um, very organic looking. And this is almost like tightening the lug nuts on a car tire. You do it in a like a pattern, you know, one, two, three, or five, but you follow the pattern and try to distribute the stress that you're applying to the glass evenly and smoothly. So when you do a lot of these, you, you should find yourself finding patterns in the applications so that you're not working in one place too long, but rather moving around and distributing your heat so that you're kind of preheating the whole piece while working on individual sections. I believe this green was forest green, which was just pulled down straight. I also like jade, although on jade's first pass uh, in the flame it can be kind of bubbly. So I like to apply it over something else like a, oh, I don't know, a big thing, a, a cobalt. And that gives it a, a heavy base that holds the green color on the surface. If you just put green over clear and pulled it down it would become kind of transparent and weak but by having a dark color on the interior it, it doesn't get that effect. You really get a nice smooth color. Then this is amber, just transparent amber. I'm going to go in and do a bunch of dots and kind of fill in the void areas that don't have much material in them. And that'll help uh, a couple of ways. One, it's more aesthetically pleasing. And two, and just as important, uh, it fills in those areas where you did not apply any glass. And that'll matter because when you heat this up and go to blow it out, any place that has thicker walls uh, will blow out differently. So in effect, the vines and branches and leaves that we applied would kind of hold the shape more than the voids between them and it would puff out unevenly. By putting a, an even amount of material around this, it's not only going to look better, but it's going to be smoother when we melt all this stuff in uh, gently and then blow it out a little bit. We'll actually leave just a little bit of relief. It won't be completely melted smooth but there won't be any acute angles and nothing sticking up to get knocked off during use. Yeah, we're almost done with the dots there. Just wanted to get up, up above all of the, the branches and, and running around the, the, what's going to be the entire lower section of the goblet. And all of this is being done on the, the Victor, which produces a, 
a really nice clean precision flame. smooth that in there and we'll make sure that everything looks the way I want it. Looks good. I dip the end of that in water uh, just to lubricate it a little bit to slide into the blow hose easily. But don't fill it up with water. You don't want water running down inside your uh, glass while you're blowing it. So I'm going to use a 7 mil rod for a handle out here and that'll actually become the very bottom of the goblet top and uh, give me some material to weld up to the stem later. So I'm going to switch over to another marvering pad that has a taller back plate and it's uh, got a cutout in it that my torch uh, actually can fire right through. But right now we want that big flame. We're going to do that weld up there Then I'm going to add the material to the base of what's going to be our goblet top bottom and then we're going to heat the whole thing up and blow it out. It's, a, it's a really the satisfying part of making a goblet is getting the top just right. So just a, a lot of heat here back and forth and, and let it soak in. Get this whole thing smooth and even and, and uh, it'll, it'll almost uh, blow on its own. And you can see now how having all that material spread out evenly is going to help instead of having isolated little areas with additional details that may uh, expand unevenly. Now I'm not really blowing on the blow hose during this phase. What I tend to do is either keep the, the blow hose restricted a little bit so that the pressure it builds on its own helps to hold its shape or hold the hose in my mouth with the little open area uh, to the side and slowly exhale just maintaining the slightest of pressure inside of it just to keep it from collapsing inwards at all. But I don't actually do any real uh, puffing on this until now when I take it out of the flame, drop it down into the marvering pad, you can see the air going in and shaping it. So I'm going to chill the edges here because I want to give it a little bit more volume and not have that clear area uh, expand too much. Meanwhile the area that we've decorated is able to continue expanding. Okay, now switch back over to the arrowhead marver. Now we're going to drive just a, a real precision ring of heat into the circumference there. That's going to be the top of the goblet and that section on the right, do not throw it away. You can use it as goblet feet. Uh, there, there, there are many uses for that section that's flared out like a bell like that. So apply a lot of heat in one thin ring. Once it's molten, you can begin to kind of draw it out, pull it apart, and then you'll want to puff it out, pressurize it, blow a hole, and run it around in, in probably one rotation would be best, and cut that off. So I'm going to smooth down that edge on the right before I set it down. Like I said, that's reusable. And then we'll go over here and, and shape the top of the goblet. I'm going to go back to my other marvering pad with a little bit taller back plate on it and grab a, a conical uh, graphite reamer. It's not octagonal. I don't think it would matter if it was, but I, I, I prefer this rounded one for doing this step. So I get the lip nice and warm get it smoothed in and this is just the the rough rounding making sure that uh, you know it's, it's it's an actual circle by rotating it there's a little bit of up and down in the top uh, we'll take care of that next but right now I just want to get the outside round there we go 
that is condensing up the lip just a little bit and that's fine you don't want to have too thin a lip okay now that move was to smooth up the top that looks pretty good so I'm gonna give it one more good gentle heat and one more run with the uh, the reamer and the backing plate There we go. All smooth and round. Alright, so there's our entire goblet top. You can just store it vertically like this. It can cool to room temperature. Uh, before you try uh, welding it up, you'll probably want to put it in a kiln and bring it up to temperature. But I have done it without. It is a fairly strong shape and uh, when handled cleanly they'll weld right up. A little bit of branches, a little bit of leaves. Uh, there's our amber dots glistening in the light. Yep, I like it. <laughs>